All right, uh, welcome to our February subscription video tasting with my friend. Svaren from Røst. I never learned his name because he has a brother uh, called Trun, and this is Svare, and they o they're always together. And they're next doors to our uh, little <laughs> lab. And uh, what is Røst? So Røst is a producer of this fine little coffee roaster. Yeah. Can, is that a roaster for every, every, everyone? Or? Well, basically it is a coffee roaster for everybody because it's uh, quite um, flexible in the way you want to use it. Yeah. But it's mostly, mostly for uh, our sample roasters, like the production uh, you know, for um, professionals to use in evaluating the quality of the coffee. Yeah. So I actually use, this is my roaster that you gave to me. And I, I use this a lot, especially from February until June. Uh, you will probably find me here on Saturdays, maybe Sundays. Uh, As always. Yeah, through, especially in the coffee buying season, because uh, farmers will send us coffees, like samples of coffees, two, three hundred grams of different lots. So one farm, like for instance, the Caballero, which we're going to taste coffees from today, they might send me like 40 samples. And uh, I roast these samples on this roaster. And then afterwards, after a couple of days, I will taste them, cup taste them. And then, based on that, decide which coffees to buy uh, or not to buy. So this is a very important piece of equipment for me. And I love it. I used to roast on an Ikawa, uh, and before that a Probat sample roaster. But now I'm only using this one, because I can roast 100 gram samples. And I can cool the coffee while it's roasting, which is fantastic. And it's, of course, fully automatable. Yeah. There's, you have a unique feature for this, so let's get a little bit geeky. There's a unique feature that a lot of roasters don't have, called the first crack. Yeah, so this machine has uh, something that we've been working on for some time now, which is a first crack detection system. Um, so that is something brand new. We are uh, licensing the patent from a university in Texas, and then we are developing the technology ourselves. But basically, the machine is listening to the sound of first crack. So with that, we can fully automate the machine and actually make it a smart automatic roaster. That's fantastic. And for those of you who don't know what first crack is, when you roast coffee beans, they're full of moisture and they're very, very hard, rock hard actually, you can't really bite them. And this moisture, of course, when you heat up the beans, becomes vapor or steam. And at some point, the cell structure of the bean kind of gives after for the pressure and it pops like popcorn. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear like a little popping sound or cracking sound and that's what we call first crack. Now, if you are Starbucks, you will continue roasting and then you'll hear a second crack after many minutes. Mm. And that's because of the CO2 gas that developed inside the beans and the pressure again gets so great. So the cell structure <coughs> cracks again. But the first crack is very important because let's say we put the coffee in and we roast the coffee and we take it out before first crack. The coffee is not going to taste like coffee. It's going to taste like malt or cereal because it's under roasted. So first crack kind of makes the cell structure more brittle, so we were able to grind the coffee. And in this kind of stage, there's also a lot of stuff happening chemically in the beans that kind of develops the flavors based on the fats and acids that are in the beans. I mean, the, fir the first crack, when it comes to sample roasting at least, is so important that even the machines that we have that doesn't have the first crack detection system, the workflow of the machine is still based on first crack yeah. so that you can have one like base profile they can use on uh, a large variety of, uh, variation of coffees, but then you can um, manually uh, press first crack. Yeah. And then you can just decide how long you want to roast past first crack, either in seconds or as a percentage of the roast time. Yeah. So I'm kind of a semi-automatic guy. I normally program a profile and then I'll sit and answer emails while it's roasting. But when I hear first crack, I'll just whoop, push a little bit and because it kind of reminds me to also watch the beans a little bit and see, you know, where am I at and so on. Yeah. Some beans you won't even hear the first crack, especially when you're doing samples. So uh, sample roasting is actually an art more than it is a science because you're normally given many different samples with different moisture contents and so on. And each coffee is a little different to roast. So you kind of need some experience in order to, you know, know how to handle it. Yeah. But let's not talk about your roaster, although I love it and it's beautiful and you're my neighbor and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, we're here to taste coffees, and for those of you who subscribe to our coffees, we're now going to taste the three coffees we're sending out in February. 
first Wednesday of February. Um, so let's start. And I'm looking forward to serving everyone this. This is the Geisha variety from Marisabelle Moises Caballero in Honduras. And Geisha variety is a famous variety because it tastes fantastic. Let's taste it. All right. You know what Geisha is? I have a very good coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's, that's all you need to know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yeah, what are the typical tastes you get here? Mm. It tastes like geisha, doesn't it? I mean, you can just say that it tastes like geisha, and most p coffee people will understand what you mean. But what are those flavors? Do you have any descriptors for me? It's um, quite fruity. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I'm not the best at describing the coffees, but um, uh, for me at least it's... Mm, it, you have the sort of the balance of the, the fruitiness and you can... The aftertaste as well is very... Like, it has a quite a long aftertaste, it's very pleasant. Yeah, very sweet. For me, this, this particular geisha is a little different from the famous Panamanian geishas. And when I say famous, this variety is famous and it was kind of rediscovered in Panama. It's actually an Ethiopian coffee uh, or variety of coffee that was taken to Central America without kind of too much disruption. So it's quite floral like uh, Ethiopian coffees. You get this kind of jasmine floral flor florality. And at least for me, this has a little bit more body than the Panamanian geishas, which tend to be very elegant and tea-like, like, you know, you're drinking a cup of Earl Grey tea. Uh, some people say bergamot, but for me, this is more like mandarin or tangerine. And if, since it uh, was Christmas a couple of months ago, you remember this kind of mandarin flavor in your head. And maybe some honey as well, mm. this kind of florality you get from uh, honey. So this geisha is from Honduras, from Marisabella and Moises, who are very good friends of ours. And they have actually won the Cup of Excellence with this coffee. Not this particular lot, but coffee from the same trees. Mm. And they are selling a lot of it to me. <laughs> and, but they also have other customers who buy it. Uh, and for me, it's, you know, one of their best coffees for sure. But... Uh, I'm just going to keep drinking it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, like Moises will say, he doesn't want to grow only geisha, because they have, uh, Marisabel and Moises, they own 150 hectares of land with coffee. And they could plant geisha everywhere and just sell it for a very high price. Uh, but, Mo like Moises says, I like to drink a different coffee for breakfast. I like to drink, you know, my katuai or something like that. So, we're going to taste two other coffees from them. And let's start with the second coffee that we're going to taste which is also from Marisa Bella Moises, but this is a Java variety. And Java variety was, you know, taken from uh, Ethiopia, came to Java probably in Indonesia, came back to Africa. Mm, it's in Cameroon and other places. And then it's been taken to Central America through Nicaragua uh, and also through um, uh, these, these seeds actually come from Bolivia. So um, that's South America, of course. Um, so Moises got these seeds from uh, a farmer in Bolivia uh, and planted it, I think, six or seven years ago. And it's quite different than the geisha. Let's taste it. <laughs> There's definitely a difference here. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. And the reason why I serve it in these cups because for me, the best thing about this coffee is the mouthfeel. It's kind of like really rich and umami-like almost. It's mm. like really filling mouthfeel. And I get a lot of this Japanese green tea. I don't know if you kind of slightly savory teas, like uh, mm. sencha or something like yeah. that. I get a lot of that in this Java variety. So very different coffee. And a coffee that not everyone enjoys. It's one of our favorite coffees in our company and we always enjoy cupping this because it's so different from everything else we have and 
It's kind of a refreshing, yet kind of savory almost coffee. Interesting, huh? <laughs> Let's go back especially, to the geisha. Especially when you're comparing it with uh, the geisha, because there's such a huge difference in the profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of tea-like, but like with tea, very different types of teas. Huh? Mm -hmm. Going from jasmine to almost something that you would find next to a sushi. Yeah, exactly. Ah, maybe coffee and sushi is the thing now. You don't need the soy sauce or the tea. You can just drink a you cup of java. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, if you brew this coffee, especially with slightly more coffee than I normally, so I would probably on filter maybe use 65 grams for this or uh, like 70 grams per liter on an air press. So just to kind of get the mouthfeel even more like, I love what that. You, what's your, um, on this one? With the Geisha, I would go actually lower to kind of get more of the elegance. And mm. so 60 grams per liter for the Geisha and maybe 65 for, mm. for the Java on filter brew. So if you're doing pour over or, yeah. Note that down. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just watch this video again. All right, so that's the second coffee. The third coffee, same producers in Honduras. Um, and, you know, I love Marisabella Moises. They're probably one of the most professional producers in Central America. Uh, and just lovely people and very good friends of mine. And I just love their coffee. So I thought, you know, great way to make a lot of people taste it is to serve these coffees in January, February, March, where a lot of people have gotten subscriptions for Christmas gifts. So I'm actually on my way to visit them in, uh, in the end of this month uh, to buy coffees for 2020. But the third coffee is kind of their classic basic coffee that they grow the most of. And it's a Catuai variety. This is a variety that comes from Brazil. Uh, and it's more of the coffee that Moises likes to drink for breakfast. And I kind of agree with him when I'm visiting them. I would we would have a cup of Katoai for breakfast and then we'll have the geisha in the afternoon where we can just sit and enjoy the coffee. Not that we're not enjoying the Katoai, it's just you know, sweet, rich. Mm -hmm. Let's taste it. Mm. What do you think of that? That's hard to describe, isn't it? That's more like a typical coffee yeah it's like good coffee but more like a normal type of coffee i would say yes coffee more flavor yeah. <laughs> it is difficult to describe for me it's quite chocolatey it has a little herbalness like uh, you can find in green chilies or green bell pepper mm. especially when you compare it to the geisha oh you get this kind of fruitiness and then You go back and you get this kind of more like a milk chocolate with this kind of herbalness that is for me very fresh and nice. Uh, but it, for me, this coffee is just so sweet and mm. like creamy. I could drink a lot of it without, you know, you don't have to overthink it. It's just a very nice it's coffee. Like a perfect coffee for the morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad that you found them to be very different because I personally find them to be very, very different, although they're grown on the same farms. Of course, uh, they grow a lot of this Katwai, maybe two containers per year, and then they grow maybe 50 bags of the Geisha and mm. like 20 bags of the Java. They have a lot of other varieties as well. You might see them later in this year. Uh, they have Pacamara, they have Batian, they have many, many different varieties, but very small quantities of it. So uh, I hope you really like these coffees. Anything you want to say? I mean, the, all of them three of coffees are like very, very good. That's like... I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, you can, <laughs> of course, you brewed it as well. So it kind of helps when you're getting the most out of the coffee, of course. But it's just uh, the combination of those three where you can actually put them up and cup them next to each other or just drink them next to each other. Yeah. It's just like the variation. You've, it's still, all of them are coffee. They're, they're still... Um, of course, they're high quality coffee, so they're sort of prime of each category. But the differences are so, um, you can really see through the differences when you're cupping them next to each other. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of interesting seeing how you can um, not just drink the coffee as a coffee, but you can think about at what time of day is this coffee actually best to drink. Yeah. 
just saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, very good point. If you want to learn how to taste coffee, okay, if you're only subscribing to one bag, you, you might see that as a problem because you only have one coffee, but just go buy any instant coffee or any kind of any coffee and just taste it next to it and then you will find a difference. But if you're subscribing to two or three, you should taste them side by side because mm -hmm. they are very different and it's much easier to pick out those flavors when you have something to compare with. For sure, for sure. Fantastic. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, not much. Uh, <laughs> if you have any comments or questions, you can do that below. Um, we will try to answer it. I don't always have time. A fun fact is that uh, Java was roasted on the rest. Because... Uh, yeah, that, I was just about to say I prefer the Java. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, just because, uh, you know, we, when we get a coffee, we'll always do a couple of sample roasts and then before we start producing it, just to get a picture of it. And then we'll do a test on our big roaster and just compare it to the sample roast we did. And then if we're happy with the test we did, we might go with that profile. Or if we're not happy, we'll have to adjust the profile and then roast again and test and then see, okay, now we're like it. Now we're going to send it out. So just so you know, we, we, ne we would never send out a coffee that we haven't tested thoroughly. And, the, this roaster is actually a big part of that process. So I hope you only like the coffees this month and hope to see you next month. Thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. See you soon. Bye bye. Perfect.